Hi, this is Jan. This video is an overview of the Davika X features as of the firmware version 4. There have been quite a lot of changes lately, so this may be interesting even for people who already have some experience with the Davika. First, let's talk about the main screen. Uh, let me first explain what's going on up here. So this is the current firmware version. Uh, this value indicates how many kilometers or miles you have traveled since the last backup. It's recommended that you configure automatic backups in case anything goes wrong with your Davega. The backups are done by uploading the data to the cloud and if you do it on a regular basis you can make use of the analytics functions. We'll, we'll talk about that later. Uh, the indicator can have three different background colors. Green indicates that the backup is recent enough. Yellow indicates there's already time to make another backup, but Wi-Fi connection is not available. If you have the automatic backups configured, then as soon as you come within the reach of your configured Wi-Fi network, the backup will be performed and the indicator turns green. And uh, red indicates that it's time to make a backup, but it's not possible since you haven't yet configured the Wi-Fi. This is the current time and it's only available if you have the meter pro can module. The Vega doesn't have its own real time clock, but it can retrieve the time from the meter. These blinking dots visualize the communication with the VESC. Uh, green blink indicates a successful retrieve response, red blink indicates a failure in retrieving the response. There's one dot for each VESC on the canvas. If you have a dual VESC, such as Stormcore or Unity, it will be represented by two dots. Also, if you have a compatible BMS, the communication with the BMS is visualized by this indicator with the letter B. The other values on the screen are uh, projected range, uh, battery voltage, average consumption, travel distance and the VESC temperature. If you have more than one VESC, uh, this shows the highest temperature. Down here is the indicator of the battery state of charge. The distance and consumption are related to the current session. You can start a new session by simply resetting the session in the menu. Uh, I won't do it now. The session data is retained even if you switch your board off. Uh, let me quickly demonstrate it. So I'll turn it off. And on again. And you can see that we still have the same session data. As soon as you start moving, the screen automatically switches to the speed view. Let me demonstrate it. And when you come to a stop, the screen switches back to the range view. There are several screens available, so let me walk you through them. This is the overview screen and it's a mixture of various values that I personally find the most important or the most interesting. Uh, the battery voltage, average speed, travel distance, projected range, the maximum motor current seen in the current session, and the maximal braking current and the same for the battery, the maximal battery current and maximal braking current on the, on the battery, the VESC temperature and the watt hours remaining on the battery. This is the session screen and it shows all the session data, the average speed, the maximal speed achieved in the session, travel distance, consumption, uh, the energy discharged and recharged in both watt hours and milliamp hours, uh, the uptime and the riding time. And the lifetime screen basically contains the same data as the session screen. The only difference is, as you would expect, the data is not reset when you reset the session. This is the BMS screen and it's only available if you have a compatible BMS. Currently, Davika supports the Flexi BMS and the DBMS. 
They are both great products and I highly recommend that you check them out. I'll leave the links in the description. The values displayed on the screen are the voltages on the individual parallel groups. You get both the numeric values and a visual indication. The visual indication makes it quite easy to see if any of the parallel groups is out of balance. For example, in this case we can see that the group number 8 is slightly low. The other values here are the average voltage, the charging current, the temperature on the BMS and the battery state of charge in percent. If you connect the charger, the view automatically switches to the BMS screen. And we can now see that the battery is being charged with 3.6 amps. Now let's take a look at the menu. The first item here is for resetting the session. And if you confirm, you can see that all the session values have been reset on all the screens. Next, let's have a look at the parts lifespan. So this wasn't even my idea. Uh, Luke Ritchie, who designed the enclosure for the Devega, came up with this. And it's one of my favorite Devega features. Uh, this lets you keep track of how many kilometers each of your board components has seen. So for example, you can see that I have over 2000 kilometers on my motors. And this is fully configurable. You can adjust the values for each of the parts. For example, uh, say that I'm replacing my belts, so I can set this one to zero. And then as you are riding your board, the values just go up. As I said, this is fully customizable, so you can add more parts by using the plus here and you can change the name of the part this is a little tedious so initially you'll want to go all the, all the way down and then one character up and that gives you the backspace so then you can delete everything and you can start typing so let me type PMS just because it's short. And then go all the way down again to the enter key. Confirm. And now the new part is added. <clears throat> then there's drive and battery settings. These are probably mostly self-explanatory, so I won't go in, into many details here. Maybe just to mention, if you have a direct drive, then you will want to set the motor pulley teeth and the wheel pulley teeth to the same value. It doesn't matter what value it is. It could be 1 and 1, or 44 and 44. <clears throat> These are the battery settings. This voltage source setting only makes a difference if you have a compatible BMS. <clears throat> if not, then even if you select BMS, the voltage will still be retrieved from the VESC because there is just no other way. Units. You can change the units to uh, miles and, uh, and Fahrenheit. Now if we go back, you can see that the VESC temperature is now displayed in Fahrenheit. And then on the lifetime screen, uh, some values switch to uh, the miles per hour or miles. Here you can configure the Wi-Fi network and your Wi-Fi password. The connect timeout is how long we'll be trying to connect until we give up. If you are unable to connect, you may try setting this to a high value. Like this. And you can also test your connection. 
successful, so that's great. Uh, before we go into the update and backup, let's have a look at all the other settings. The meter pro can is just for configuring the time, so you can either completely disable displaying the time, you can set up the time zone and the time format, 12 hour or 24 hour. Here you can configure the display orientation, it's possible to run the Daviga in a landscape mode. Uh, the initial distance uh, relates to the lifetime screen, for example if you are installing the Vega on an old port. The switch screen delay is how long it takes for the riding screen to uh, switch back to the range screen as you come to a stop. So if it's zero then it switches immediately. In riding screen main you can configure what should be displayed on the speed screen uh, instead of the speed, so you could also have uh, battery current or motor current or you can even have a combination of uh, a speed and battery or motor current. Let me show that real quick. So now I switch to speed and motor current. So with this setting the speed is displayed as normal and in addition to that you have the motor current in the upper left corner right here. For the voltage display you can choose between the total or the average cell voltage. And you can also configure that the session is automatically reset whenever you charge your battery up. And last, you can reset the lifetime data, for example, if you are putting uh, the Deviga on a new board. Then on the About screen, you can see the details of your Deviga, the firmware version and your device ID. Uh, you want to keep your device ID confidential. Uh, then your VESC details and your BMS details. Last, we'll look at the update and backup settings. Uh, when you enter this, uh, first the device will restart. And that's because this will involve uh, communication over Wi-Fi, which requires a lot of memory. And the restart is simply to maximize the memory available and to prevent any memory errors. In the backup menu, uh, you can uh, backup your configuration and your data manually. You can list your latest backups. And you can also configure the automatic backups. Uh, with this we are saying that we want the backup to happen after each 6 miles traveled. If you don't want the automatic backups to happen, uh, the best way to do is that you simply set this to the highest possible value. <clears throat> In the firmware menu, you can upgrade or even downgrade your firmware. The listing shows all the firmware versions available and the one that you have installed. Before the version 4, the firmware had two parts, the bootloader and the application, each with a different version. Since version 4, there is only a single part with a single version. The downside is that you can no longer have multiple versions installed at the same time. But the advantage is that this is much less confusing and also all firmware updates can now be done over Wi-Fi, which is a great improvement over the previous state when you needed to get access to the USB port in order to update the bootloader. You can also still easily switch between different firmware versions. It just takes longer than before because the firmware always needs to be downloaded. To install a firmware, simply select the desired version and click download and use. For the firmware changelog, go to davika.eu slash fw slash changelog.txt.
the firmware version 403 introduced significant changes in how the data is displayed for two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive setups. Where it makes sense, the field is now split into several smaller fields in order to display the value for each individual motor. For two-wheel drive setups, an aggregated value is sometimes included. For example, the maximum motor current is available for each individual motor on the right-hand side. And there's also the total maximum current on the left-hand side. Note that these two values do not necessarily add up to this value because the individual peaks might have happened at different times. The same applies for the session screen. For example, you can see that the energy used is slightly different for each of the two motors. In case of a four-wheel drive setup, there's no aggregated value because then there are four individual values and there's simply no space for the aggregation. One disadvantage of displaying the values in this way is that it takes longer to switch between screens since there are more values to be loaded. This currently cannot be configured so if you don't like it, you may need to downgrade to the previous version. Uh, some configuration options will probably be added in the future. Last, we will take a quick look at the analytics features that you can use if you do data backups on a regular basis. Go to daviga.eu and click on Analytics. You will need your device ID. Just to remind you, you can find your device ID in the About menu. Enter your device ID and click on Plot Data. The points in the chart correspond to the data backups. You can see how much riding you have done at various times or the evolution of your average speed or your average consumption. You can add more data or hide data by clicking on the legend at the bottom. This is the last part of the presentation. Thank you for watching.